This is Jay Mantine, and today I have a video on World War I weapons still in use. World War I, also known in German as the Einz Weltkrieg, was a conflict that began in 1914 and ended in 1918 with the defeat of the Central Powers, which consisted of Germany, uh, the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Believe it or not, many of the weapons used by these empires are still being used on the modern battlefield, Browning Automatic Rifles in Brazil and Syria. The Browning Automatic Rifle, also known as the BAR, was an American squad automatic weapon designed between 1916 and 1917. The weapon entered the war late in mid-1918 and was the second Dairy squad automatic weapon after the French show shot for the U.S. Army. This weapon served the U.S. military from 1918 until the midnight for the M60 and the Stoner 63 series of light machine guns. Believe it or not, the Browning automatic rifle is still being used on the battlefield for the M60 and the Stoner 63 series of light machine guns. Believe it or not, the Browning Automatic Rifle is still being used on the battlefields of Brazil and in the battlefields of Syria. And Brazil is used by the BOP, which is the which is a form of um, Brazilian military police, BOP, which is B-O-P-E. And in Syria, it has been seen in the hands of rebels, jihadists, and Islamic State fundamentalists, um, jihadist fighters. Browning automatic rifle is pretty iconic. Many of you World War II fans will know this as the standard light machine gun for the U.S. Army during the Second World War. Also, German Mauser Model 1898 still in use. The Mauser Model 1898 was a standard German rifle from mid 1915 through 1918 during the First World War. The Mauser 98, along with its older counterpart, the commissioned rifle model 1888, were the standard service rifles of not only the German army, they were also used by the Ottoman army and also by Bulgarian and Austro-Hungarian troops during the First World War. Today, the Mauser model 1888 can still be seen on the battlefields of Iraq in the hands of the Kurdish Peshmerga the Iraqi security forces, and in the hands of the Islamic State. These rifles were dug up after the 2003 invasion of Iraq, where U.S. and coalition forces discovered large weapon couches stashed away by Saddam Hussein in the years after the 1991 Gulf War. Many of these weapons included old German Mausers, but also some World War II weapons like German Stammgewehr 44s, MP40s, Italian Berettas, a model 1938s, and a few other World War II classic, classics. Other weapons that were found, along with the Mauser Model 1880, uh, other weapons that were found with the Mauser Model 1898 in Iraq, also includes the German Luger PO8 or the PO8 Luger. The Luger was the standard German sidearm during the First World War alongside the more iconic C-96 Broomhandle Mauser. The Broomhandle Mauser pistol has been seen on the battlefield too, but I will mention that later in this video. The, C the Mauser Model 1898 variants like the Mauser Model 1898B and A models have also been seen for those of you who don't know what the Mauser Model A and B, these are pretty much just carbines of the Model 1898. Later, after World War I and the 1930s, 1935 to be exact, the German Reichswehr would redesign old Model 1898s and old Model Mauser Model A and B carbines into what we would now refer to as the iconic Nazi era carabine 98K. In Yemen, you can find all of these rifles, including Ottoman Mausers, Ottoman Mausers from the 1890s. 
So yeah, even the automated rifles from the First World War are appearing on the modern battlefields to this very day. Next weapon, the Russian Mosin Nagat. The Mosin Nagat what is the most iconic Russian rifle, only second to the Kalashnikov, also known as the AK-47. The Mosin Nagat was designed between 1880 and 1890 and actually went through a large number of designs uh, and actually went through a large number of designs and prototypes before coming up with the final model that we all know today. During the First World War, the Mosin Nagat was actually in short supply and the Russian army had to rely on older weapons like the Badan 1 and 2 and even old French weapons like the Grass model 1874. The oldest rifle the Russians used during the First World War was the old Kranka rifle from the 1860s. But the Mosin Nagat still made up about 60% of all Russian rifles during the First World War. The shortage of most of the guys in World War I was actually one of the reasons why the Russian Empire lost because they were not using enough modern weapons against their more modern foes, the Germans and the Austro-Hungarian forces. But today, the old most of the guys, some World War I variants and World War II most of the guys model 9830s can be seen on the modern battlefields in places like Ukraine, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, even in the drug war in Mexico, and in Brazil, and in Argentina, the old Mauser is still at the old Mauser. The old Mosin they got is still seen on the modern battlefield alongside more modern rifles like the AK-47, the M16, and the iconic Belgian FNFAL. Another weapon, another World War I weapon that appears on the modern battlefield every now and then is the old Italian Carcano model 1891. The Carcano, also known as the Fusili di Carcano or Fusil di Carcano, was the standard Italian rifle of the First World War. This weapon was chambered for the strange 6.5 by 52 millimeter Carcano, a blunt note. The Carcano rifle can still be seen on the modern battlefields of Libya. During the Libyan Civil War, thousands of old Carcano rifles were brought out of storage by both the pro-Gaddafi forces and anti-Gaddafi forces, including foreign jihadists backed by Qatar. These old Carcano rifles are still being used to this very day in the current Libyan civil war, sometimes referred to as the second civil war in Libya, by pretty much all sides, including the Islamic State and Al Qaeda linked forces. It's pretty awesome to see this old Italian rifle still being used, even though its ammunition is far outdated for the modern battlefield. The next weapon from World War I that's still being used in the modern battlefield is the old Russian PM-1910 Maxim machine gun. The PM-1910 Maxim was the standard Russian machine gun of World War I, and it was pretty much the standard Russian machine gun all the way up until the 1930s when it was kind of, it wasn't officially replaced, it was never fully replaced, but it was kind of sidelined to an extent by other Russian machine guns like the DP-28 and a few other uh, LMGs from that era. This machine gun served the Russian military from 1910 up until the 1960s when it was finally completely replaced by the DSHK and other Soviet machine guns from the Second World War. But it, didn't, it, it doesn't end there. The OPM Maxim still appears in the modern battlefield in battlefields like the Ukraine conflict where hundreds of old PM-1910 Maxims are being brought out of storage. Some are taken from museums, and some are family heirlooms that have been passed down. Lucky, luckily for the various factions fighting in the Ukraine conflict, there's still plenty of 7.62 by 54 millimeter rim cartridges around for this machine gun, 
as that particular type of ammo is still the standard heavy caliber or medium caliber rifle cartridge, not only for the Ukrainian army, but for the Russian army and pretty much most Eastern European countries as a whole. Billions, if not trillions of rounds of ammunition for this old gun to still spit out at enemy forces on both sides. It's kind of interesting seeing the old Maxim machine gun being used. I mean, this is literally like the fifth um, true gas powered slash recoil powered machine gun to enter service. It's kind of shocking to see this old machine gun, which is usually fed by fabric belts, for those of you who don't know. Kind of odd to see this old fabric belt machine gun firing on the modern battlefield. Even though nowadays the fabric belts are supplemented for rubber belts or felt belts. But still, this gun can pretty much use all of them, so yeah more power to the, um, I guess, Ukrainian and pro-Russian separatists that are battling each other for control of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic. The next uh, World War One era weapon that still appears on the modern battlefield is the American slash French Hotchkiss M1909, also known in the U.S. as the Bennett Mercia. The Bennett Mercia slash Hotchkiss M1909 was a French light machine gun designed between 1901 and 1905. This weapon was the standard U.S. light machine gun up until the introduction of the Shoshat and the uh, Browning automatic rifle in 1918. Keep in mind, the American Shoshat was different and it was pretty crappy. But the Bennett Mercia was seen as the better gun between the two, with, with the exception of the Browning automatic rifle, which was pretty much better than both of them put together. For the French military, this is the second or third most common machine gun used by the French military during the First World War. The most common was the Hotchkiss M1914, and the second most common was the Shoshot CSRG 1915. But if you thought that Bennett Mercer's story ended there, it doesn't. This weapon is still seen in Brazil in the hands of some Brazilian law enforcement agents or BOP agents, as I mentioned earlier on the list, and in the hands of some drug cartels alongside more modern LMGs and assault rifles. This is it's kind of surprising to see a weapon like this. I mean, the PM Maxim is still has some usefulness, but I mean, this old Hotchkiss machine gun is fed by a metallic feed tray or metallic feed strip. You don't see many feed, feed, um, feed strip type LMGs or automatic rifles or light machine guns on the battlefield up to today. Only about four or five of them have been spotted over the last few years in Brazil. I just hope 
the Brazilians don't stop using this iconic weapon. I want this weapon to be around for at least another 20 years. I know it sounds goofy, but yeah, I like it. The Hotchkiss says slash Bennett and Brasier is one of my favorite World War One weapons, just because of its weird feeding system. The next weapon from World War One that's still on the list is the Danish Madison machine gun. The Danish Madison machine gun or Madsen machine gun, also known as the Madsen Resmussen LMG is a Danish machine gun slash light machine gun that was designed between 1888 and 1896. In 1900 slash 1901, the inventor decided to switch to finalize his design from a semi-automatic rifle to a, what we will now call a light machine gun. What most people don't know is the Madsen was the first true LMG to enter service with any army. With any army, it was first used during the Russo-Japanese War by Japanese by Russian troops against Japanese forces in China. Then it was mostly used during the First and Second World War. During World War One, it was mostly used by the Russian, French, and German armies as a secondary or main light machine gun as the Russian army in World, in World War I didn't have an LMG. The French army kind of had an LMG in the form of the Shoshat, and the Germans had their own LMG in the form of the uh, MG0815. This machine gun, the Madsen, is still seen on the modern battlefield today in places like Brazil during the ongoing Brazilian drug war in the favelas of Brazil and the favelas primarily in the favelas of, in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro, or just Rio. It's really shocking to see this old LMG. I mean, to be honest, it's way more useful than the Hotchkiss, the Hotchkiss or Bennett Messia LMG. I mean, the Madsen is, is literally the most iconic Danish weapon. I mean, when I think of, of Danish guns, you know, I think of the Madsen LMG. It's just, it's just that iconic. I mean, as a World War One weapon, it's I wouldn't say it's the most iconic. I mean, a lot of people don't really know about the Madsen, except for those who are World War One slash World War Two weapon enthusiasts. Um, but yeah, this old girl is still kicking on the modern battlefields of today. The Danish Rasmussen. It's, uh, it's literally over 100 years old. I mean, it was originally designed as a semi-automatic rifle in 1888 and throughout 1896. The only difference between those variants and the standard issue variants were the magazine types and its um, firing in the way that both, or, or the way the primary Madison and the prototype rifles fired. But other than that, they're almost the same, just fully, it's pretty much fully automatic versus semi-automatic. So yeah, iconic weapon still being used over a hundred years later. The next gun on the list is the old British Lewis gun. The Lewis gun was the standard British light machine gun from 1912 up into the 1960s, where it was finally replaced by the Brent gun. Even though the Brent gun entered service in the 1930s, but the Lewis gun kind of stuck around for a few more decades after that. In fact, the last country to use the British gun was British India. So yeah, the Brent, the Lewis gun was thought to have gone out of service around the 1960s, but 
I did find one photograph from the ongoing civil war in Yemen, which shows a Hoopty fighter or a Hoopty rebel armed with a Lewis machine gun. So yeah, at least in Yemen, the old Lewis gun still has a purpose. I mean, the gun is over a hundred years old. It was designed between 1909 and 1912. So it's well over a hundred years old. Still, war, it's, um, his gun is just, I always thought the Lewis gun was kind of goofy. I mean, it has that giant flash suppressor on it. You know, that giant um, barrel stroke. So yeah, just seeing it on the modern battlefield, just, you know, it's nostalgic. The next weapon from World War One that's still being spotted every now and then on the modern battlefield is the old Vickers machine gun. The Vickers machine gun was the standard British medium slash heavy machine gun of World War One. This weapon was chambered for the standard cartridge, the .303 infield and had a rate of fire of around 500 to 600 rounds per minute. It was pretty much just a modification or an upgrade from the old Maxim Model 1880 and Maxim Model 1890 and 1895 series of um, early uh, machine guns used by the British military. This particular Vickers machine gun was found by the BOAP, Brazilian BOAP military police during the during a battle with various uh, drug cartels in one of the favelas in Rio City, the strangest thing about this Vickers machine gun is the fact that it still had its original fabric built. Just imagine being a Brazilian police officer battling a bunch of drug cartel drug lords with and, and with, with a World War One vintage Vickers machine gun using its original fabric belt. It must have been a blast from the past. The next World War One weapon that still appears on the modern battlefield that still appears on the modern battlefield is the old German Mauser C96 broom handle Mauser. The C96, also known as the broom handle Mauser, as I just said, is was the standard German sidearm during the First World War. It was one of the first semi-automatic handguns to enter service. The first one being the um, the Scharnberger Laumann from Austria-Hungary in 1892, and the second handgun to enter service was the Borchardt C93. The Mauser C96 was at least the third or fourth semi-automatic handgun to enter service within any military hi period within history. This gun was a standard sidearm for the German Army in World War I, and it was still in use during World War II. After the 1950s, this gun pretty much disappeared from the scene, but it has appeared every now and then on some battlefields. I did find these photographs of the C-96 appearing in the Syrian Civil War and in the hands of Ukrainian officers during the Ukraine conflict. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty laughable. I mean, like this, um, the C-96 was made for German colonels and is now being used by jihadi captains and Ukrainian military officers. Just, wow. I'm pretty sure the designer didn't expect that to happen. The next weapon is the old British Lee Enfield. The Lee Enfield Mark I through IV series were a series of bolt-action rifles used by the British military since 1888. The Lee Enfield was originally the Lee Metford rifle. The Lee Metford was pretty much just an eight-shot version of the later Lee Enfield. Both were chambered for the 303 Enfield and both were the standard British bolt-action service rifle used during the First World War. Believe it or not, and it's not really hard to believe, but the Lee Enfield is actually still used in places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Middle Eastern conflicts, I mean, African conflicts like Libya, Somalia, 
And it's also seen in countries like uh, Colombia, where the FARC uh, paramilitary force is active. It was also spotted in the ongoing conflict in Myanmar between the various factions within that conflict. It's not really surprising to see the Lee Enfield still being used. I mean, it's, it was literally the most common British rifle of pre-World War I, World War I, and World War II. That and the fact that there were more than 10 million made. So yeah, the Lee Enfield is still being used to this very day. And finally, the last World War I weapon I've been able to find on the modern battlefield, the old French Labelle rifle. The Labelle, also known as the Fusil, uh, also known as the Fusil Labelle M1886, was the standard French bolt-action rifle of World War I. It was chambered for the 8x50mm Labelle, this weapon was originally adopted in 1886 and served all the way up until 1960. The last war that the bill was used in was the uh, Algerian War of 1955-1962. The bill has appeared recently in Afghanistan. In 2016, at least one or two Labels were used by the Afghan Taliban. It's kind of strange since I don't remember the label being sold to Afghanistan. But then again, French weapons are known to appear in other conflicts like in Syria and elsewhere. But that's for another video. So, moving along. So, yeah, this is it. This is pretty much all the weapons I found so far from World War One. Now, there are some other weapons from the 19th century that are still being used on the modern battlefield, including some of the ones on this list, but there were some I didn't put on this list on purpose because I wanted to surprise you all later on. Okay, well, I am planning on making a video on World War II weapons still in use, and a video on 19th century weapons still in use. You'd be surprised how many World War II and 19th century weapons are actually still being used on the modern battlefield. So, until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off, and if you have any ideas for future videos, please put them in the comment section below, and you all have a good day.